All right, so to extend this clean slate, if your frame hold isn't working, all right, so actually I could probably just just for illustrative purposes to see if they uh, showing this a couple different ways. I'm just going to revert my project real quick. And um, so now if we see here the way we ideally we want to do it is to be able to right click on it. And it's tricky where you click sometimes. Now we have the option. Yeah, so this way I do see that it added this additional clip in there, which is basically just a picture. And then we would just extend that to the end so that it fills that in. All right, if that does not work for whatever reason, and I'm not, I guess we probably altered it somehow so that it keeps that from happening. All right, we're gonna go to our button editor like we did with the uh, action safe area, and we're gonna find the little camera in here. All right, so if your frame hold isn't working, click on the button editor, select the camera and drag it down onto your toolbar here. All right, just like we did with that title action safe area. All right, then we're gonna press that camera button and it's gonna basically export the frame and you should have that clip selected also. I should have said that before because I, otherwise I think it's gonna take a picture of something else. And make sure you have this box checked off, import into project. All right, when we do that, we now have in our project panel a new clip that's there. So I can drag that onto my timeline and extend that out. And now we have the same thing happening, right? And I can just double check that by turning off these layers. Um, however, though, I don't like the way that looks because now, yeah, that background layer. All right, hold on one second. So I just want to get this to work here and then we'll talk about differences. All right, so now let's see if the camera works here. So I, I hid my other layers and now I'm going to take that picture and I'm just going to call this BG so that I know that that's the one. The file type shouldn't matter too much. All right, so now I have BG. Let's see if that one is correct. Yep, it stays the same. And then, uh, so that's the picture that I want and I'm gonna extend that out. And then I can show my other layers. Save it, because we made some progress. All right, and now we'll move on. All right, so if those ways don't work, all right, since this is really just like a still image in a sense, I could take this out and I could see how long this clip actually, so if we're looking at this, it's what? 57 seconds, all right? What I could do is take my background video also, and I could right click and say speed and duration. And I could say that their duration instead of four seconds is 57 seconds. So technically it's gonna really slow down that video, but nothing's happening in it anyway, right? So speed and duration, we're just going to say that could make that clip, instead of being four seconds, it's going to go 57 seconds. So if there were action in there, we would see like really slow motion happening to it because it would be slowing down that action. But, um, you know, in this case where it's just a blank background, it doesn't make a difference. All right, so we talked about a frame hold. We talked about taking a screenshot or using the speed and duration to slow that down. All right, so for color correction, we're saying we're gonna to go to the color tab. You would choose the layer that you wanna make effects to. And let's talk about, let's look at basic correction first. All right, so if we click on this tab, it expands. And in here then you can adjust exposure. So you could really make that brighter. Um, you could adjust your shadows. Make that darker in that area your whites, your blacks. Um, so that is uh, your, your tone as, w as we're looking at there. Let's look also at this creative. Let's see if we can get something happening here. So they have this faded film, sharpening vibra uh, vibrance. Let's like oversaturate our ghost. And 
then let's boost up the saturation on there or the vibrance. Really make it stand out. All right, this probably wouldn't be that authentic, but uh, oh, here's what I was looking at before also, I think. This vignetting, that kind of creates a shadow around it. Uh, vignette, V-I-G-N-E-T-E, -E, it's the last one. All right, so let's just make that layer kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, if we really wanted to make this, I think, work properly, we would probably like record this in the green screen or something, or we could make what's called a mask around the character here, the ghost, which I think if I, hey, I'm not going to go into that too much, but we would try to make like a, a, a selection area around the character, and then that effect would apply a little bit better. All right, so really just kind of blow out the proportions so that you can see that. And, um, and then we'll go on to graphics next. So at the beginning of most videos, we have titles, right? So I'm gonna, um, going to move my playhead to the beginning of our timeline, because that's where we want that to go in. And then, hi. So some of your students for the ID kits have masks on and their eyes closed. Okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna start by going to the graphics tab on the top. All right, so as you see, we're going through these different tabs at different points of the project. So right now we've done assembling, we've done editing, we've done color, we've talked about effects. Actually, captions is new. I'll have to look at that a little bit. But um, in this graphics uh, tab, you have a bunch of presets over here on the side. These are like animated pre-made titles. I'd like you to find one, um, and they do have lower thirds, which we talked about. But I would try to find one that says title, all right? You can kind of preview it. If you click on it, it should show you a little bit of what it's going to look like. And then from there, we can just drag it. Actually, how do we do that so we get it at the beginning? Yeah, we'll put it right over it, all right? So let's just drag it onto our timeline. So I took this angled title. I dragged it to my timeline. And then all we're going to do from that point is just double click on it and then we can add our title to it. So we would say, let's call this ghost scene demo. All right, you can find a different title if you want a different one, but just drag it over to the top. And then if we scrub through or press the play button, we see that nice title applied to it that's animated. All right, next, actually not the last, I'm sorry. We have one more, we're gonna do credits next. All right, so you have your title at the beginning. Most productions have a, has some credits at the end. Yeah, wait, most? Most, yeah, I'm not gonna say all, all right. So I'm gonna move my playhead to the end. I'm gonna go back to my graphics. All right, and we're gonna find another one. So let's go to browse. And we can just use, actually, instead of using one of the presets, let's see how we can just make our own text box. All right, so if I choose the T tool, and I can say, just kind of click in this area, and we can just say, edited by, We'll put your name in there. Now this box is uh, a little small. It's uh, my text is too much, so I can go to the selection tool and I can expand that. All right. So if your text is cut off by a small box there, like I have with two lines, you can just use that selection tool to expand that. Uh, I'm going to center it. So we have all of our formatting options down here. Um, something you know like this would actually it's going to be okay because what you're going to see is that you know it's going to be on a black background if you have it at the end all right so did everybody manually create a text box instead of using the presets you have all of your font styles and families and stuff down here kind of like the bold ones that stands out a little bit better 
Pas sûr. All right. And the last thing we're going to do is to make it roll. All right. Now watch what I'm going to do up here because this is one of these weird little things about Premiere that if you it's going to drive you crazy because you're going to forget about it. But hopefully, you know, this will help you a little bit. All right. So in order to make it roll, to animate up, what we're going to do is we're going to click off of the text. And then on your graphics tab, you should have a section here that says edit. And then all we have to do is go down here and press roll. All right. And I say that because if you don't, if you have the text selected, which, you know, our, our normal thinking is that in order to affect something, we have to select it. All right. But it's kind of contrary here. So you're just going to kind of click off of it, but make sure that your text is selected on your timeline. Because if you don't have it selected down here, then you don't have the roll option. So. Don't select it like it, to edit it, but just select it on your timeline. And then we have the option to roll. And in here, you do have some options to start off screen and end off screen. I, I think that looks kind of typical to what we see. And then if we scrub through, we can see our text scrolling up, All right, automatically. So that's a nice feature in that you don't have to animate it manually. We could do that to make it move, but we're just gonna have it roll up. Questions on that? All right, rendering. So do a final save. Just do Control S or File and Save. And then we're going to export. Question, Carolyn? All right, so to get this to be a MP4 file, all right, which is, you know, uploadable to YouTube uh, or playable on Windows Media Player, anything like that, we're going to go to File, Export. Oh. I want to select Media, but notice it's grayed out here. The reason that is is probably because I'm not, I have to just click somewhere in my timeline, all right? Now I select the timeline, it kind of highlights in blue. So if you ever have that issue going on where you go to Export and Media is grayed out, that's probably what it is. All right, so. With that said, I'm going to go to Export Media, and then we'll have a pop-up that gives us some export settings. All right, in here, um, we're going to change format, should be H.264. We talked about in our vocabulary about codex. Wait, Blu-ray Blu -ray or normal? Normal. All right, so we're going to make sure our format is H.264. You can see here there are a lot of formats. Um, Bitmap would just be to make a, a, a series of pictures, which I've had students do that before. They, for, they like have bitmap or JPEG. And depending on how many frames you have, it's going to make that many pictures. How do you export the media in a camera? Um, it's just like a Give it a minute. It'll probably pop up. Um, all right, so next thing we're going to do is go to output name. Oh, wait, all right, let me bring this over. There we go. So I changed format. If it wasn't already at H.264, make sure that that is correct. And your output name, if you click on where it's in blue here, it's going to allow us to choose the location and give it a name. All right, so I would put it in that same D drive folder and call it Ghost Scene um, Demo. Go scene demo, yep. So that we know that's what we were doing with this. And I mean, with your own project, you can actually build it within this project and just have separate timelines, that type of thing. So format is H.264, output name we are uh, choosing there. And I'm looking for one other setting here. All right, so on the bottom, my screen is a little smaller. Let me just resize this over here, I think. And then I can okay. scroll. And then would we hit Q or just X? Hold, hold on, we're getting there. All right, so on the bottom also, um, you want to always change your source range to entire sequence unless you marked endpoints on your program um, timeline. All right, so 
most likely for everybody here. We want to do the entire sequence, all right? And and then we can do a Q. What Q does will, is sends it to Adobe Media Encoder, and you could then come back to Premiere and work on, on a different project. But for now, I think let's just go through Export, and it's going to go through that process and, and actually export that. So it's telling me it's going to take five minutes and five seconds. I think it might speed up. All right, so we're going to let that go. Uh, yep, it's speeding up pretty quickly. When it's done, we always want to test our video by double-clicking it to play it. And then as long as everything looks good, we'll upload it to YouTube. And for today, I'm going to have you all post the link to uh, your YouTube video uh, as a class comment so I can check everybody's uh, final rendering on there. All right, so I'll just kind of wait for this to finish and we'll go through that process. It's only going to be another 30 seconds. Uh, your format, Gwen, was H264. And then you just want to click on where it says output name to uh, choose the location and the, um, and the, the name of it. All right, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. So depending on the length of your video and the amount of effects that are applied, that's going to determine how long it takes. All right, so it's exported successfully. You know, and as we're saying, it's always a good practice to go in and check, um, check your final export. Don't just assume that everything worked. So if I go into here, video production, Ghost scene, I'm going to search by date. Didn't I have it in here? Should have gone in there. There we go. All right, so I'm going to double click on this. And it's showing in my other screen. Oh, I'm muted on my audio. And I have music playing in the background, which doesn't help. All right, but this video now is playable. Let me turn off my music. All right, so this is what you should be doing to test it. You just double click it and it'll open in the uh, media player. Just to make sure you have your title, you know, you should have your ghosting of there and our credits. All right, so that looks good. And then the last thing we're going to do, as mentioned, is to then upload this to YouTube so that we can share it, you know, on whatever platforms or, you know, to wherever we want. You can go, you know, to your social media and stuff from there. So I'm going to minimize Premiere. I'm going to kind of just get this on one window here. And then I will go to YouTube. So in your apps, uh, thing you should have it there as a, a shortcut and then all we're gonna do is press upload and it will allow us to select the file which I could have dragged also in so probably the easier way and that's why I was opening that window so I can just drag oops Um, all right, so the settings in here, you could pick a playlist if you wanted to create one to organize. Uh, you, it will be made for kids, um, which it's interesting though. Like I, they have, I like to make a playlist of all your videos to kind of like in our Google Currents, and um, when it's not made for, when it's made for kids, you can't add to playlists. You ask our question. Hmm. There is still a way to there is still a way to add to your own playlist, but it just takes a, another step. But yeah, I don't I, I don't know why. Um, so just double click it after it's exported. So I'm just going to go through here. Make sure that you have it either public or unlisted. All right, choose one of those two. Unlisted won't be searchable. All right, so if somebody searched for ghost scene demo, um, it wouldn't find it that way. So if, if you are kind of a little more private, you would maybe want to make it unlisted. And then I can click right here to copy the link and do a save. 
and you could share directly from here or you know for today we're just going to go down here and paste that link so that I can view all of your wonderful creations.